Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. This is Dilmer again, and today I'm really excited because I'm going to continue the videos on Oculus Quest development. In this video, I'm going to be walking you through the results that you see behind the scenes, which I'm actually using hand tracking technology to push different bands. Some of these bands have different physics components that I'm going to be walking you through once we jump into Unity, and I'm also going to be making this project available in Patreon tonight, and then it's going to be available to everyone else in GitHub next week. So let's jump into Unity and start working on it. I try to add limits and the every button has uh, basically a max value and a min value. I can also, you know, touch the buttons and you're going to see it on the lock. The way that I did it is I put a label on each one of those buttons. Basically, I'm using Text Mesh Pro to do that. And if I do it really fast, everything is working just fine. I'm going to also show you how it looks when I start using, you know, if I go from the bottom, like you can see here where I am actually trying to go from the bottom and I have limits so it won't allow the button to collide and see like right there and, and actually go beyond the minimum and the max value. I can also do it really fast and, and everything everything works well. I can also use you know single finger, double finger and you know do it really slow and I'm really happy with the results everything everything works. Even the little one works really well. And I'm using join, so I'm going to show you in Unity what I do to make that work. So I'm just going to pause it and then close it. And we can look at the scene in Unity. So the scene that you see right here, it's called Buttons. I'm going to be submitting this to GitHub so you guys can check it out. It's going to be available in Patreon first, and next week it's going to be available to everyone. So the way that I did it, I added a button group. And basically, this component is the one that has all the other components. I'm just going to show you all the different pieces. So the holder, it's the it actually has a rigid body. It doesn't have a mesh. Uh, it has a mesh render, but it doesn't really render because I only wanted it to to be the one that is controlling the button that is on the bottom. So the way that I have it set up is I don't show the mesh render. I have a rigid body, and I'm going to show you why I did it this way. But this component has a mesh collider. It also has a rigid body. It's set to kinematic because we don't want this to basically fall with gravity. The other piece that actually is doing most of the work is basically this component, right? You got to push it down, but we want to make sure that we don't go beyond, you know, the bottom because otherwise it's not going to, it's not going to look right. So what I ended up doing in this component is this one is a rigid body as well, has a rigid body. It has gravity. It also has what's called a spring joint. Oh, and also on the rigid body, I have position constraints rotation constraints and I'm constraining everything except the y-axis because all we want to really do we want to just move it up and down on the y-axis we don't want the component to be rotating on any of the axes so the spring join what it allows me to do is basically to connect it to the holder so the holder is going to be the object that you saw here on the very top that's the one that is controlling and and basically serving as the parent so what I, the way that it works is when you have a spring if you have a spring you know, an object here, an object here, both of them are going to be reacting to physics. Like if, if you were actually, you know, expanding a, a spring and then restoring a spring. So that's how I set it up. I have the disconnected body is going to be the parent. I also have an anchor and these anchors are already set up in a way that, you know, it works. It works well, already tested it really well. I also have what's called a button limit and I'm going to show you the code of that. But that's basically the one that was responsible to making sure that this doesn't go beyond, you know, the, the bottom part of there. And it doesn't go, you know, above the top part because it wouldn't really look realistic if we let it go all the way up and all the way down. The other components that I have is, is the base. So the base is, is fairly simple. It's just it has a rigid body and a mesh collider. The reason why I added a base is because we want this component to collide with that component. And the spring join also has a property called en enable collision. So it just makes it look a lot more realistic if you have the enable collisions on the spring join. And then the base, you know, is serving as a collider with a rigid body so we can make it look more realistic. And then the last part that I'm going to go here in wireframe or actual trigger. So the trigger is the one that is telling the, you know, is telling the button trigger that somebody actually collided with it so that way we can activate and actually execute a unity action and then we can also you know show this information on the logger so i'm using a unity event the unity event it's called unbound press i'm logging i basically have this object called logger the logger has it's kind of like a manager that allows me to log to the terminal that you see 
on the basically right here and some people call it terminal it's just a logger for me but I, I thought that was interesting some people call it the terminal but the way that it works is this is just my own component I can share that with you if you're interested but you're gonna see it as part of the project as well so now let's go ahead and look at some of the components so now that you saw that the button trigger is the one that is sending a unity action and is sending this information to the logger logger gets it is displays it displays it on the canvas then the next thing is just to look at the code right let's go ahead and look at the a couple of a couple of the code in here so i'm going to look at let's look at the trigger first so the trigger is very basic it has a required component collider the reason why i added this as a required component is because this is using on trigger enter so if we don't have a, a collider here then this is not going to work it's just not going to do anything in fact it's just it's never going to execute that method or execute this method so that's what i made it i make sure that you know as soon as you add the script we are requiring a component the component of, if, is of type collider it doesn't really matter what collider you have this is going to support the box collider the capsule collider a mesh collider it's just going to prompt you to actually have a collider before you add the script so the next thing that i have is a unity event it's realizable because we want to control you know what we actually bind this to and then i have just you know press in progress just to make sure that we don't call this 100 times and the way that i do it is on trigger enter i have you know i pass in the collider this is very you know very vanilla to unity using the the on trigger enter and, and on trigger exit so what i do is i have an extension method and i can show you what that is all this is doing is saying okay is the is the collider that i'm colliding with has does it have a tag of type button activator if it does this is going to return true if it doesn't it's going to return false so as long as this is you know as a button activator and we're not the press is currently not in progress we're going to say that the press is in progress we're going to set it to true and then we're going to invoke the reason why i do question mark here is because this is nullable if for whatever reason i don't populate this i don't bind it this is going to throw an all exception we don't want that to happen so by doing a nullable it just allows us to have a safety net there so and this at this point we're going to be sending an event it's going to log it to the to the actual logger and then when we exit out we're just going to say okay if we're exiting it out and it, uh, we're, we're exiting from the button activator we're going to set this to false and then we're going to invoke we actually shouldn't be invoking this again that's actually why it's executing so many times it's going to be removed we only want to do it on button press only on the trigger we don't want to do it on the exit so i just fixed a bug right there so the next one is the bound limit and let me show you in unity where i put that in i think i showed you earlier but i want to show you that one more time let me go ahead and go here wait until it compiles so if we look at the button activator this this is the one it's basically the top piece right that's the one that we don't want to go beyond so i thought why not add it to the activator so it has a button limit so it's going to track itself where it is and it's not going to allow it to go you know beyond that position or beneath this position here so the way that i'm doing that is i'm getting you know uh, basically a reference to the button trigger remember the button trigger is right here and we need that so that we can calculate you know what the minimum value is going to be and also what the maximum value including what the original position of this of this component is so i also have a private flow for the minimum distance the maximum distance so the minimum distance i'm calculating it by using the vector 3 that distance i'm getting the button trigger transform position and then basically subtracting the transform position of this component i set the max distance to be the actual button trigger position y which is going to be this guy right here we don't want to go beyond that position so the as soon as this component reaches you know that position if it goes beyond that beyond that point we're going to be reaching you know the the position the max distance so we don't want to go beyond that and i'm also tracking the original position because we want to know if we're reaching the max distance that we can restore the position of this component so the update method is the one that is making sure that the distance of these two objects are not going beyond the, the minimum distance and then if they are i'm just basically restoring this object tra transform position which i'm using the original position here from the awake method and then lastly if i'm trying to go beyond actually if it, if the transform that position that y which is this object is less than the maximum distance then i'm basically restoring restoring that by creating a new vector grabbing the transform position x grabbing the max distance which is going to be the you know the y position and then i just set passing the original transform position that's z so this takes care of not going beyond the boundaries 
And the other thing that I can show you as well is when I was testing this, I also had a little, you know, hidden element in here because right now I'm running on my Mac, so, and I can actually run hand tracking with the link cable, so I have to find ways to test this. And one way to test it is by just having a cube that resembles, you know, what the hand will be. So if I try to go up here, it's going to collide and it's going to reach, you know, the minimum distance, and then it's going to restore itself. And the same thing, if I go down, you're going to see that can actually move this aside and it's not going to go beyond the Y value because I'm, I have the, the button limit and that's always going to work. It's also good. Well, I wouldn't say always for the most part that I've been testing is working, but I can test that with every single one of the buttons and everything is just working just fine. So that's honestly everything that I wanted to show you guys. If you guys have any questions on hand tracking and you know, the way that I implemented this, let me know. And just so you know, this is going to be available in GitHub next week i think i'm gonna do it by wednesday next week and if you want it right away just make sure that you check it out in patreon tonight thank you guys all right guys thank you for watching this video today if you guys have any questions please let me know in the comments also make sure to check out learnxr.io where i'm basically doing training on vr development and i'm also going to be doing training on ar development also make sure to check out patreon.com where i'm basically posting what i'm doing behind the scenes and also early access source code thank you very much guys